Right, finally this board has now been wired, put back in place, tested, that's working. This board here is the opposite board, and that board there is for the corner. But there's a problem. Mould. We battled with this a lot, trying to get it sorted, and it's still being a bit of a pain. And these board things, well, they're kind of bent. Despite efforts, they're still warped. I've watched a lot of people's videos, and they have the same problem. It seems to be quite common. This area is a pain. Uh, we've done a lot to it, it still keeps doing it. So, what I'm going to do now is basically bleach all the mould off, and then cover it in some kind of sealant. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Right, so I just dug out the uh, this. No idea how suitable it is. It's probably not. It's old and knackered. It's um, probably not suitable, but I don't know. I'm going to use it, and if the baseboard dissolves, so be it. Okay, so that's mostly covered in all the key areas, at least. It's good practice to varnish all your baseboards, but I haven't because it's treated wood. But still, I don't want mould on it. Um, don't really want my mould soaking in. So there's a bit here as well. Right, finally, those two boards are now in, wired, connected, and working. We can actually make the loop now. There's a strange thing with this. With DCC, as I showed you on the video, it works as designed. For some reason on DC, it's, um, they're both working. Plus this flickers, which is kind of cool. Sort of shows you the waveform. Which is unintended, it's just kind of cool, but obviously something there is possibly cross wire. It's not causing any problems on DCC, it's fine. It still works as intended, strangely, but for DC it's not. So I'm not worrying about it for now. If you've got any ideas what it is, please tell me. But um, when I take this board out next to do some work, at that point I'll then investigate. But at the time being, I'm not going to bother. Um, it's a bit annoying, really, but never mind. So finally, done, 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 and done. For the track wiring and the point wiring, the uh, these things, these shelves, and the shelves need to be finished off properly. Once I do that, I'll make the whole circuit. Leave it there for now. Well, I've just had a go on DCC, and it seems that we still got the same problem. You don't get the flicker, but yeah, this button isn't actually doing its job now, whereas before it did. So I presume something behind behind it's bent or pulled out or just cross connecting. I'll have a look later. It's not causing any actual major problems, it just means you can't shut that buzz off if you need to fault find. Or indeed, operate two DC locos one up, one down, because they all move together. Okay, so it's a day or two later, Dunkoff has fixed it. Right. Not working as it shouldn't be, but it should be now. See? So I've got this fixed. Um, the problem was, I cross-wired somewhere, so this board I took out, put it on the floor, basically had a look at the connections beyond that little bit, fiddled with it, put it back, it worked. Well, what's going on? So then I put the connectors here and the connectors there and it stopped working again. So I'm like, oh. So I pulled that one out, problem still persisted. Pulled that one out, problem stopped. It turns out, like a knobhead, underneath the board I wired this one to this. So obviously I've just crossed the two over and they have therefore that explains it. So now that's fixed, which is good. I'm going to show you something else now.
So, <clears throat> the obvious question is, what's different? Because you've seen it run before. Well... <coughs> finally put the works plates on. Uh, from Narrow Planet. It's very good. I still have to paint the wheels green. And maybe do the valve gear in silver, depending on how I feel about it. Uh, then obviously a chip, maybe smoke and sound. People have done it before in this size, but at the moment I'm still a smoke and sound noob. Um, but yeah, curbs are working nicely. Okay, all this is working nicely, even Percy goes over it nice and slow. And it's obviously the same for the other end. Okay, so <clears throat> now we've got the curves done on both ends working electronically and mechanically up to hit about halfway on the board. It's just a case of continuing it round now, replace that board. And then um, I've got to sort this out because it kind of stopped here. I need to continue that there. Instead of using scrap bits of wood, use a proper surface because ultimately the boards are going to rest on top of it that live in the middle here. So I'm pleased with the progress. I've been out of motivation for about five months or so, and then just started to get it back. Right, same applies there. You know, and here. It's all got to be resurfaced because, I mean, there's nothing really there. It's just random bits of wood. Look at it. No good. And things could fall down, smash the stuff below it. Don't want that to happen. Um, first job on this board, scenic wise, will be the platforms. I've got some wood ready, I just need to cut it down lengthways to, to reduce the width a little bit. And that will be the first bit of scenic work to go on it. Then it'll be point rodding, right? And um, at that point, maybe maybe signals and then ballasting, but we're still a long way off. I'm taking this very slow, I'm not rushing it. I want it to work properly. So, despite my efforts, obviously things ain't perfect, but they're pretty good for the most part. All right. All right, so the wood's off, it's there, and it's there and it's all off so we have now need to make some blocks essentially it doesn't have to be all the way just I mean, same height there's a block here and two over there we've got some spare loft boards i'm going to stick them on it for start with Awkward. Don't really have anything to hold it with, but it's only rough work anyway. Eh. Ha, 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 ha. 
Right, I didn't want to get the circular saw out just to cut little scrap pieces that really don't matter, which is why I've done it the awkward way because we don't even have like a clamp or anything at the moment. So I'll just use my hands. Not the best. Crap, but you know what? Don't matter because it's going here. We ain't going to see it. Ta da! Get three blocks. Like everything else in life, it seems to be more difficult than it should be, but we got it done. Roy Boss. Right. Uh, jigsaw, the edge of it, it's going to run along this piece of wood I've just screwed on as a guide. Go halfway, move the wood, put it on that side, and then, um, well, hopefully, it'll be cut to length. I think I'll have to do this twice. Right, done. I couldn't cut this to save my life, not straight, even with the guides, but it's kind of done anyway, so I'm happy. There's a screw in there going into that block. Um, same for there. There's a little L bracket because it split the wood. And then same for there, plus a little cutout. These wires that just hold everything up. And underneath you've got some battens using the scrap. And, uh, oh, there's a button. And yeah, basically, it's just to store the baseboards on. I might extend it on the end somehow, but for now I'm quite happy. I have to do the same to the side now. Right, a few days later, um, well, in fact it is the 22nd of January. So you got this with all this stuff on it, right? That's been moved from this side. So now you've got loft boards, you've got six of them. And the batten underneath. Okay, this has been put there, replacing the other one, and obviously I need to get a new one, which I don't have yet, and we need another one of these lights at the end, because it's a little dark now. But this has been screwed down here, and like I said, battened, and it's not going nowhere. So that can accept a new layout one day, or a um, just more storage space, really. But I do need to get the front cover for the eye glare. And next thing is, Got some new wood here to replace that because the baseboard just dipped and that kind of smoothing idea didn't work. So we're going to get this replaced. Okay, so you can see by the different coloured piece of plywood that's the new board and it fits better. Uh, it's still not like perfect, but I mean, how perfect can you get it? It's pretty good. If there's still like a little dip, I'm just going to pack it because I'm not faffing about it again. That's the second board it's had. This is pretty good. I have basically joined it underneath to lock it in place and this bit I've added that strut there but uh, I still ain't sure exactly where the framework's going to go on this so it's still a bit wobbly and the gap ain't exactly the best but I'm going to have to live with it because this was the last piece technically put in on the circle but <clears throat> I'm sure we'll get away with it. So what I can do now, clean the place up a little bit. So as usual, it looks a bit like a bomb site, and uh, nice and blurry. Yes, I can start laying some tracks now on this side. But rather than actually laying them properly and integrating them into layout, I'm thinking of just doing a loop temporary for the time being. So I can just play and have a bit of fun with this and operate it properly. Uh, to that end, this stuff, the Pico bullhead is turning into rocking or shit, quite frankly, because, I mean, all this lockdown crap, uh, Pico don't seem to be putting out as much, so that it's hard to find the track now. So what I've done is bought some DCC Concepts stainless steel rail, which is half depth sleeper, not a problem, I can pack it to join it. I've got the stuff to solder it, so that's not worrying me, as it does some people. And um, I might use that temporary. Whether I use it on the main layer, I don't know. But that's where we are. Now ready to make a temporary loop. Or I can make some of it dedicated if I wanted to. Right. 